Hello, welcome to uh, part 24, so I'm nearly a quarter of the way there, part 24 of 100 objects uh, that look at and tell the history of Summerhill School. And object 24 is the piano. <laughs> this one doesn't work, in fact it's actually a telephone, but anyway, but it's a good example of a lovely model of a grand piano. Okay, so I find it very interesting that uh, uh, when Summerhill um, moved to Suffolk, I think it was in 1928, because it had been uh, at near Lyme Regis before that, and then before that sort of uh, abroad in Austria and things, that in 1928 it moved to where it is now, uh, which is uh, an old house and grounds that had belonged to the Garrett family, the famous Elizabeth Garrett Anderson and Wilson Fawcett uh, Garrett, um, who or we listened, Garrett Fawcett, <laughs> um, uh, uh, whose family they, they lived sort of older, but th uh, th they had a relative, Richard, who um, had the house built. Anyway, um, from 1928 to about 1933, so it's only five years, but it probably went on longer than that. The, the local cinema, which is one that is the oldest cinema in Suffolk, um, it was silent. It was a silence. The, the movie, the cinema became a, a, a cinema with, with sound, with talking pictures after 1933. So whilst it had a piano, uh, and a pianist to accompany the films and every week there'd be a, uh, a day, I think a Thursday possibly, where the, the school would go down, all the children in the school could go down and they'd get money from, from POC or whatever to go down to the cinema to watch what was on uh, in, in, in Leyston Cinema. So, and uh, before 1933, they would have heard, it would be side movies, and they would have heard this fantastic pianist accompanying um, the films, the black and white silent films. And I think it could be a fine, you could get fined as a student uh, by the meeting, that you, know, you weren't allowed to go to the cinema that week, or you wouldn't get your money to go to the cinema or whatever. But anyway, but the interesting thing is that with Graham, which is the the, the students sort of running their own disco and uh, sort of dancing uh, to records and things, the um, uh, the pianist from the from the cinema would come up to Summerhill, and he would play the piano so that they could have uh, piano music, uh, live music, and that they could dance to this music. So that was a regular thing. And uh, it's quite interesting because uh, more recently, in the last uh, 10 or 15 years, um, Zoe, who um, used to uh, go to the Snake Maltings and was part of the local choir there, sort of singing things like Al uh, The Messiah uh, by Handel, Handel's Messiah, that uh, uh, the, the pianist four snake maltings or one of them, uh, a concert pianist, would come to Summerhill and would uh, would uh, accompany um, uh, uh, the, the the whole school in fact on uh, in in its uh, Christmas uh, carol singing concert when <laughs> the, the, the school would stand, all the, the students and the, st uh, the staff, each of them would stand on a table, the staff on one table and then different age groups or different areas like the shack on one table, the carriages on another, the sand on another, the cottage on another. These are different age groups of children living in different areas and then they we would uh, we'd all sing together and uh, the pianists used to love it even though, as you can imagine, with uh, 80 odd people singing, and especially staff like me, <laughs> who have not a single a tonal note in their body, uh, that it was quite an interesting experience <laughs> within our dining room. But uh, And then we would do sort of the 12 days of Christmas, where each table would have to do a different day, 
and that was brilliant. And then and sometimes it resulted in a competition between the tables who could sing theirs the loudest. <laughs> And and there were lovely times when Zoe you could you could walk past the dining room when Zoe would be having a singing lesson in the dining room singing. <laughs> and I think in fact it begins with that. The if you remember, the children's BBC um, uh, series. The, there's also a film called Summerhill. Um, starts with uh, I, th I think uh, with a car arriving, and it's the start of term I think. And Zoe's in the dining room uh, doing a standing on a desk doing a singing lesson <laughs> much to the dismay of, of these proper uh, parents who are bringing a new girl to the school <laughs> anyway let's just have a look at uh, what Neil says in fact as the Domini he says this is before he, uh, he uh, sort of created some hill he created some in 1921 and that's the centenary of this year uh, but in 1914-15 he was a head teacher it's the first time he'd been a head teacher I think of, of a state school Gretna, in Gretna Green and uh, as you can imagine I've been uh, he wrote a book called The Dominic's Log which was one of his earliest books I think it was his first book in fact uh, where it's sort of autobiographical, it's very humorous, and it takes us through a whole year of him being headmaster at Gretna Green School. And I'm doing a separate uh, blog, video blog, of a hundred lessons to learn from his his book. So I'll just sell that now. <laughs> it's a great book. Anyway, um, this is what he says. I wish I were a musician. If I could play the piano, I should spend each Friday afternoon playing to my bands, which is Scottish for children, my children, my students. I should give them Alexander's Ragtime Band and Hitchiku. Then I should play them a Litz, Liszt's Rhapsody and a Chopin Waltz. So it's a great combination of different <laughs> musical styles, but especially the popular ones like Ragtime is. Yeah, and that is a, uh, I wonder in terms of racism whether what it was thought of in the village where he was in terms of sort of black music and Hichiku, so very popular dance music. Uh, then I play them Lit Liszt and Chopin because he was very much into uh, classical music as well. He thought that children should be able to enjoy both. Would they understand? This is Neil again. Would they understand and appreciate it? Who knows what raptures great music might bring to a country child? The village blacksmith was fiddling at a dance in the hall last night. So fiddling, playing the violin or fiddle. Ah, I learnt the fiddle in a week, he told me. <laughs> and I believed him. What effect would Yi Sei, who's a famous composer, have on a village audience? The divine melody would make them sit up startled at first, and I think some of them might begin to see pictures. If only I could bring Yi Zai, sorry about the pronunciation, and Pacman to this village. What an experiment! I think that if I were Melba or Yi Zai, I should say to myself, I've had enough of money and admiration, I shall go round the villages on an errand of mercy. <laughs> so he thinks maybe they're, they're very good piano uh, uh, musicians as well. The great, they say, begin in the village hall and end in the Albert Hall. The really great would begin and end in the village hall. So that's good, isn't it? That's about Neil's uh, idea that he he would be playing music to the children. And in fact, later on, I think he uh, one of his uh, friends, who's an actress from London, comes and joins his class and sits with the children, which he loves. The fact that she, and the children love it as well. She sits next to the children, and then uh, before she goes, uh, uh, they uh, she teaches the children to dance some of the modern dances from London. <laughs> which uh, Neil loves. but uh, So music is extremely important in terms of um, uh, schools like Summerhill and it seemed to be, you know, as here, um, uh, and Neil's talking about it in terms of responding to it and how we, it 
creates emotions and pictures and, uh, within within our minds and, and that uh, he's afraid that the village children may never get to hear this music uh, and that uh, in a sense it was their right not only to hear it but to, 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 and to see how they might respond to it. Uh, and he does do some experiments later on in terms of culture in terms of poetry, what what kind of culture do these children respond to in terms of cult, uh, poetry and in terms of um, language and, and rhythm and things. In fact, there was one uh, guy, I think it was called Trotter, who worked for the Royal School of Music. He would, um, at the conferences, New Ideals in Education conferences, in sort of uh, maybe in 1917, 18, I can't remember the date, but he, he did presentations where he brought his school, school students with him. And then, uh, in a sense, uh, I think... Um, the audience could choose, but he, he, he either got the audience to choose a piece of music or um, he, he chose one at random and, and, and then he would give it uh, to uh, a teacher that he trained and the teacher would go off with the children and whilst he was giving his lecture on the method uh, the, the teacher would use this method to teach uh, the, these children and they'd come back and then they'd perform the music that they had only just seen so, uh, and it was a bit gimmicky, but uh, it was a very strong way of showing how, how creative and enthusiastic these children could be in terms of learning music and then performing it. And there's lovely pictures from um, Kingsley Hall, in fact, uh, which was set up by two sisters, Doris and Muriel Lester. The sisters who were, they were friends of Gandhi, and Kingsley Hall was where Gandhi stayed uh, for one for the conference on India in London, but it was very famous uh, as a as a settlement community. I mean, they, the settlement communities where you'd have sort of middle class people, normally from universities, called the University Settlement Movement, uh, who would then set up community centres within East London and other cities. East London had a number, and Kingsley Hall was one, sort of one of these. And the, the, on the top, of the, the building was specifically designed uh, and built for them. And they also built a, 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 a children's house, which is a nursery based on Montessori, which still exists, both of them, Kingsley Hall and Children's House, still exist and they still are doing fantastic work with children and the community. Um, but there's lovely pictures of, of the children at, from Children's House, you know, a hundred years ago or whatever, uh, or, uh, yeah, uh, with, with pretend musical instruments uh, as a band and then being, and one child conducting them all and the, the, a group of adults just watching, which I think is really good as <laughs> sort of just playing at or acting out as being uh, an orchestra. But, um, with, with the piano, the, the, there's another story to do with uh, the, um, Kingsley Hall, because there's one in Kingsley Hall in, uh, in Bow, uh, near to Bow Church in, in East London. Um, and there's another Kingsley Hall, which they built further east in Dagenham. And the one in Dagenham, which is, is bigger, in fact, it's got uh, a lot more grounds, I think, and it's, it's all together, with, I think, with a nursery and, and various halls and things for performing and for meeting and for coffee and things and cakes and, and, and child support. And I think even uh, there used to be medical um, activities like uh, nurses and things. But um, a famous person that went there was Dudley Moore. Uh, the great, uh, fantastic comedian and actor who, who managed to get into Hollywood. And Dudley Moore, as a child, had, had uh, was born with a, a physical handicap to do with his feet and he needed special shoes to help him to walk in terms of uh, um, his disfigured legs or feet. And the hall manager, because he would regularly come into the hall as a young child, that they raised money and they bought him special shoes that would allow him to, to, to walk properly and, and to develop his physical uh, ability. And uh, they had a piano there, just like pianos at Summerhill, that were sort of open access in a sense. And he learned the piano by going there as a young child and, and playing the piano as often as he liked, I think, with a lot of support there from the community. And when he became famous, he would go back <laughs> I think you go back sometimes unannounced and just, you know, someone would find Dudley Moore at the piano playing. And other times he would help raise money for the, for 
uh, the, the, the Kingsley Hall settlement in Dagenham. But, uh, yeah, I mean, so it's interesting that when people think about Summerhill, they think about a, a private school that is for the well-to-do and things, which I, I, it never was in the sense that uh, uh, Neil always struggled with money and would normally take, take any student and in before the 70s I think uh, they would take students actually from local authorities who, who couldn't uh, cope with uh, with state schools and sort of educational psychologists would send them to some, somehow but anyway uh, sadly they don't do that now and there'd be legal fights to try and get them to and sadly, there's a lot of ignorance about Summerhill in uh, special education needs tribunals, which I, I, I attended to help one of the parents to fight for her right for, to, for the local, uh, for her to get the local authority Kent, I think it was, to send their child to Summerhill. Anyway, going back then, we have this image of Summerhill and uh, up to 1933 at least, and the great uh, the, the, the local pianist from the cinema would come up and play for dances at, at the, in the lounge or whatever in, in the, for uh, the children and the staff. And it was always a thing, wasn't it? I think that uh, uh, A.S. Neil would, uh, when it was the gramophone, which is what it's called now, the gram is. The, the, the disco, as they call it now, run by the children, not run by adults, but uh, normally with an adult as part, or possibly as a part of the committee. It's an elected committee called the Grand Committee, who who buy new records or that's sort all of downloaded. So, but it used to be records when I arrived. It was records and CDs. Anyway, um, the the pianos at the school have have, uh, have always been sort of open access, and there's an, uh, when I was there last, there was a piano in. A wonderful room which had been the library which as you go into the school in the main entrance of the house it's uh, through the meeting room on on the left it's a lovely sort of isolated room with uh, large glass windows and wooden paneling and it's now got a grand piano in it and that's open access to children and they the when it's not being used by a piano teacher to, to teach the piano and then there used to be one in um, what was the humanities room has become class two and then there was another one in the music room and i think so several around the school i think there might be less now there's one always apart from the grand piano in the in, uh, what was the library there is now uh, there's always been i think one in the dining room where people just play and where so he has her, her singing lessons and then there's one in the in the music room and all of these uh, are sort of open access and they used to have one I think in the jazz cafe so um, and a lot of students over the years have become fantastic uh, musicians in terms of jazz and in terms of piano playing and whenever we go to a reunion uh, fantastic uh, music played by, by uh, 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 different ex summerians sort of and, and creating a band spontaneous band and then doing jazz and playing some incredible music uh, which uh, people dance to all of that can be spontaneous okay, okay, yeah. brilliant so um i've just got one more story to tell i mean sadly i, I can't play the piano i wish i could but um and that is a story from that zoe used to tell because uh, Many people think about the you know uh, the, the concept of children and getting the best out of children, getting you know making sure excellence is a word that our government used to use you know, with education, education, you know, creating excellence, yeah, and it's uh, something that Ofsted you know an excellent school and things, and um, uh, Zoe would uh, sort of possibly put a question mark over the concept of excellence because uh, with the, and she liked a bit like Neil. Um, to tell stories that would get people to think and maybe respond with a bit of surprise and and maybe a bit of anger because uh, she was she would say that she once had a student uh, at Summerhill who was a fantastic musician and and who had a teacher I think they would go to Paris in fact to have their lessons um, or that well no they're going down to London and they'd have their lessons in London but I think with a very famous pianist and uh, um, uh, they came to, uh, when they came to Summerhill. Uh, you, know, uh, you know, there's a question of uh, the pianos are open access. You know, the, the, the children have a choice, and they they can sign up for music lessons, and and, and but they can teach each other. They can develop the uh, 
themselves. Uh, they have all the time in the world. And the outcome of this young girl, who, who the parents and other people thought would become a professional pianist, a concert pianist, she, she gave up the piano. <laughs> and the thing about Zoe telling this story, I, I can't tell it the way she does, is that uh, you know, it's a positive story. It's not a negative. Why should we see it as a negative story? Yeah. And it's one of the interesting things about um, uh, those who, who seek to, to be the best uh, is, is how much they're driven and how much they're driven by others and in a sense and, and, and how they're motivated and how they're trained and uh, whether that's a positive or a negative thing even though the outcome of, of the quality of what they do is you know, unbelievable there's a question of what happened to their childhood. <laughs> okay, right, so that's the piano. Thank you very much indeed.